In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In today's Gospel, by the Sea of Galilee, a man deaf and mute is brought by several people to Jesus to be healed. Jesus takes him aside and puts his sacred fingers into the man's ears, and spitting on his own fingers, touches the mouth and lips of the mute man. Jesus looks up to heaven and groans and says, Epheta, that is, be thou opened. Immediately the deaf man's ears are healed, and he can hear, and he is then able to speak perfectly. This gospel is a striking allusion to the sacrament of baptism. If you've been to a baptism in the extraordinary form, then you have witnessed a very similar event. The priest, ordained in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, after the exorcisms over the one to be baptized, he takes his fingers and, touching his own tongue, says the same words as he makes a cross on each ear and nostril of the one being baptized. Making a cross over each ear with his fingers that just touched his tongue, the priest says, Epheta, which means, Be thou opened. And then making a cross over each nostril, he continues, Unto the odor of sweetness, Be thou, evil spirit, be gone, for the judgment of God draws nigh. In the Gospel, we notice that it is not the deaf and dumb man who presents himself, but he is brought by others, and they intercede for him. In a similar way, God parents and sponsors bring their godchild to the priest for baptism. Just as those in the Gospel request that Jesus impose his hands on the deaf and dumb man, so in a traditional baptism, the priest first imposes his hands on the one to be baptized as he performs the exorcisms expelling the demon. Jesus took the man aside, and so those in the catechumenate are separated from the world to grow in knowledge and love of God and the Catholic faith. Even the location of the miracle of the deaf-mute man is significant for baptism. The miracle took place by the Sea of Galilee, which flows into the River Jordan, where St. John the Baptist baptized our Lord. It is these ceremonies that are performed so that the baptized have their ears opened to hear the Word of God in Scripture and in the Church's teachings, and also that the baptized speak rightly the praises of God in prayer. Throughout the Gospels, our Lord performs actions and healings through physical ceremonies to convey his spiritual healing, and thus he instituted the seven sacraments so that by the physical and material ceremonies they bring the spiritual healing in his grace. Our Lord first healed the man's ears and then his tongue, as first we listen to the word of God so that when we hear the words of God's revelation, which give birth to us to supernatural faith, we can then rightly Praise God. In preaching on today's gospel, Pope St. Gregory the Great makes several important observations. The gospel says that our Lord put his fingers into the ears of the deaf man, and he spit on his own fingers and touched the tongue of the mute man. The fingers of Jesus represent the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Elsewhere, in the gospel of St. Luke, Our Lord says, If I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. In a parallel passage of St. Matthew, instead of using the words finger of God, he uses the words spirit of God. So it is the physical finger of Christ that represents the gifts of the Holy Ghost that expel the lies and deceit of the devil so that our ears can clearly hear the word of God, so that we can have faith and listen to how we should live our life of faith. Thus it is the finger of Christ 
or the gift of the Spirit that enlightens our darkened mind unto obedience to God. Jesus is the Logos, or the Word of the Father, which can be understood analogously as either an intellectual thought or a spoken word of the Father. As Jesus reveals to us who God is, he opens our minds to God through our ears. He opens our darkened intellect through our ears, which have to be first healed. Next, St. Gregory comments that the spit represents the wisdom of God. Also in the traditional baptism, exercised and blessed salt is placed on the tongue of the candidate for baptism with these words. Receive the salt of wisdom. May it be unto thee a sign of reconciliation unto life everlasting. St. Gregory says, Spittle is a secretion of the head which floweth into the mouth. So Christ, who is the head of the church, produces the wisdom that should reach our tongues so that we rightly praise God and that we rightly preach his divine teachings that we believe through supernatural faith. The praise and preaching then of the church and of the faithful is then not our own wisdom, but the wisdom of our head, Jesus Christ. And then Jesus looked up to heaven and groaned, not as though he were unable to perform this miracle himself, but to instruct us that all good things come from heaven, and that it is from God that we should pray that the obstacles that prevent us from faith be removed, and that the obstacles which prevent us from praising God rightly and from preaching rightly be removed. Then Jesus said, Epheta quod est, Adapirire. Epheta, that is, be thou opened. The ears are addressed to be opened, so that through their opening the heart be moved by the words of Christ, the words of the Creator, the words of our Redeemer, so that by the new creation our stony hearts may be brought to life through our ear. As our heart is then restored, then we speak rightly the praises of God, who has come to heal us from our sins. The healing of the deaf and mute man shows the two important areas in which we must be healed for our salvation. First, it is important that we be saved by faith, represented by the healing of our ears. And secondly, we be saved by praising God and speaking rightly of Him as represented by the healing of the tongue. My dear faithful, I do not need to make any specific critique, as I'm sure that many of you are already aware, but many even inside the Catholic Church also need to hear today's gospel. It seems that many have fallen into material heresy, if not formal heresy. Many who once had the faith have ignored the words of Christ. They have lost the purity of the Catholic faith as their preaching and their praise are no longer in line with the universal and apostolic Catholic faith. Like the crowd who brought the deaf and mute man to Christ, let us pray and gently and charitably lead those fallen away Catholics that we may know back to Christ so that he may heal their spiritual ears and their tongue once again. Let us do so gently and charitably, as we remember that keeping the faith and persevering in God's sanctifying grace are not something that we can achieve alone, but it is God's gift. Let us pray that we remain and persevere in His grace, and let us pray that the Spirit of God and His wisdom may penetrate all men and women so that we all may persevere in the grace of our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't forget to click subscribe, and click the bell to be notified of future videos.